in Photoshop, there's a number of filters that perhaps you don't use that often and are really worth looking at. Maybe you've looked at it once and thought, oh, don't really like that, can't see any use for that, and you've ignored it since. But I love to go through these filters and think, you know what, there's actually some additional life in a filter that maybe isn't loved as much as another filter. And now what I'm going to do before this, I'm just going to create a layer. So I'm just going to go to layer and new layer. Click OK. So any effect applied is now just going to be applied to this layer and not to this layer because it's going to, what I'm going to be using is the picture frame. So go down to filter and down here to render and picture frame. But before I do that, I want to turn this blank layer into a smart object because the thing is smart objects means I can edit it, add effects. I can also change it so I can change the picture frame at a later point because there's some a weird thing with picture. This picture frame is one of those oddities that just works in a slightly different way from some of the other filters. So layer, smart objects and convert to smart object. So it's now being converted to smart object. Now you think, great, I can go and apply it. Thing. But it's a bit like a brush. So in a sense, if you go to the brush tool, if I go to the brush, there's the brushes, and you find that you can't access. So, but you can, of course, you can access it. You can do with brush as well. You can also do it with the filter itself. What you can do, you can double click into the smart object and now apply it to this layer. Now you can add, and I think a quick and easy way is to add another layer here. I just love to have additional layers because it just gives you a lot of flexibility to be able to say, you know what, I don't want that. I can work with, I can remove it. I can always add something else. And that's a great thing about layers as well as combining with smart objects. So what I can now do is go to filter and down to render and picture frame. And there's a number of settings. I'm not going to go through all these settings because there's just so many. So you've got basic, it's split into basic and advanced. Now there's sadly no randomized feature. One thing in Photoshop they never seem to put, which I would love to see. There's a few filters that tools have got it, but very rarely just a randomized because then you click on there and just run through all the possible options. And there's a lot of options. You can modify the margin, size, you can reduce that down so you can see it shrinks, you can change the arrangement. So you can create just by changing the arrangement. So literally thousands of possible combinations. You can change the flower. You can also, with different options, you can change the leaf as well. Obviously, some there's some of these have leaf, some don't. Some also don't have flower. So you can, and also you can vary in advance. You've got a number of lines. Obviously, some of the uh, various options don't allow for lines. But in this case, you've got thickness. So you can change the thickness. I'm just going to go for a bit thinner than that, just about there. And you can modify the angle. So you can rotate it around. And you can see you can create all kinds of different designs simply by changing the angle. And then you can also add a fade, which is a very unusual fade, but it sort of fades it away at the top. It's very odd. And you can also invert. Actually, I personally, I prefer that one. Right. Once you've decided on the thing, you can go obviously change colors as well. You can go for you know, blue there, and click there, and so on and so on. So there's a whole load, obviously the same color as that one, which is not so great. So make that darker. And you can see you've got the design there. Press OK. Now what you can do, you can also add layer effects to it. So layer, layer style, and go to like bevel and boss. So you can add that, maybe a drop shadow. Now you'll notice with drop shadow, you have to be a bit careful because you're right at the edge. Because the one thing with smart objects, it just generates a smart object that's just enough for it. It doesn't allow for sort of, you have to, you can resize it, but it's uh, generally, I have to always just resize things that way. But you can use like, go over to uh, image and canvas size. You can just change that canvas size, make it a bit bigger. Perfect reason. So you've got your design there. Now you could, of course, turn this into a smart object if you want as well. So if you want, you can always go to a layer and smart objects, convert to smart object, and then apply, say, a filter to this, maybe distort, twirl or something. 
if you want to. I'm just going to show you. You can add a twirl. Click OK, and it will distort it slightly. Now, of course, this is a layer, and you can remove it. So you can say, oh, I don't want that one. So I can now just go and said, I go to filter again. Before, actually helps. Go to layer and create a new layer. We can use that layer, of course. Layer, and then you can then add another filter. So filter, render, and picture frame. And of course, you've got the same one there. It hasn't obviously changed, but again, that's why I think the random one would be nice. But curly vine, just go for that one, or simple lace. Something very simple design like that. And you can modify the margin again, size, shrink that, arrangements, just modify. You can see it changes, click OK. And you've got that design. And again, you can also do exactly the same as before. Maybe hold down the alter option key. And you can duplicate that design. So you've got two layers. So instead of just having one, you've got two. Or maybe rotate it. Maybe add bevel and boss just to that one. So you've got one layer and you've got one layer without. Or say adjustments. There's a whole heap of different things you can apply. Now you've got that design. Now I'm just going to go with that. Of course I could have gone with the old one as well. But this is in a PSB file. Now it's just this is the smart objects. And now what I can do, I can go back. So save. Remember to save it if that's what you want. You want that design. And then the design there is changed. So you've got the, obviously, this new frame. And of course, what you can do, you can go and add additional effects. Now, this is a smart object. So smart objects can have a filters. So filter and maybe a blur, maybe add a blur, Gaussian blur. Maybe recolor it. So image adjustments and vibrance or hue and saturation. Maybe just change it from blue. You can just go for purple instead. So you got that then. And also what you can do, again, you can maybe resize that. It's a good thing about smart objects. You can resize them to a degree. Like that. And you can, of course, duplicate that. Hold down the alter option key and duplicate that design. So you can create far more. And of course, what you can do with that design, that's separate from the other one. You can go and say, apply other filters, maybe stylize oil paint, find edges. I don't know, just apply different things and just try out different things. Maybe slightly shift it slightly. Maybe go for a color for that one. Adjustments, hue saturation, just change it and so on and so on. So literally thousands of combinations that you can combine with this. And of course, what you can still do, you can just go and add another one, another layer if you want. Of course, at some point it becomes a real mess. But you can see instead of just having a very basic frame, picture frame, you can create quite complex picture frames with a mix of multiple layers, multiple smart objects, multiple filters, multiple adjustments, all added to combine to create some really wonderful designs. And of course, once you're happy with everything, of course, what you can do, you can obviously combine them, maybe combine them all into another layer smart object. So it's all one smart object, which you can then, of course, go to filter and I'm not going to go with liquefy, it always seems to take forever for me for some weird reason. Again, twirl or something. So you can apply a twirl. I love the twirl one. So twirl, and you can see and distort that design. And again, adjustment. If you don't want the purple, you can still add another hue saturation on top of that. And all at this point, every single bit of this design, all these designs, the, the picture frame there, you can just double click into that, double click double click and then you can get to the source design and modify and, or change it so if you decide you know what i don't want this one this picture frame i can go and now i'm not going to do this but i'm just going to obviously filter and gain render you can then add another picture frame so a picture frame to the picture frame and you could change that magic smoke 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 magic smoke whatever magic smoke is so you've got that design on top of that. And of course, what you can do, you can always go to filter and render and picture frame. Maybe change the setting slightly. Maybe not that. Go the other way. Let's just go slightly out and change snakes. Or let's go for another one. Snowflakes. Interesting one. Aligned flowers. Some are better than others. 
and that, that doesn't seem to oh, increase the file size there, so obviously make that a bit bigger, and you can see that, and then click OK, and that's applied to that. And of course, again, you can go back, save. Now, <laughs> I have no idea, this is probably going to look quite a bit of a mess, but I'm just showing that you can go through a bit of trial, as you can see there. Close that, again, save. And that's applied to all of those things. You've got a far more interesting and maybe slightly odd, unusual picture frame at the end result. Right. So what you can do, and this is just this one thing I just want, but before I go, I'm going to just remove that completely. I'm just going to, obviously not remove completely. So I'm just going to do that. Because another thing you can do with the uh, picture frame, because you notice when you do a picture frame, you say you go into this, uh, I'm just going to go to this background. I'm not going to worry about the uh, uh, layers and all that sort of stuff now. What you can do when you say go to filter and render and picture frame, and I'm just going to quickly apply this one so I can show you. Maybe I'll change it so you can just see a different variety of yeah, that's that one. Go with that one, and you've got the design applied there, which is fine, of course. But you can always use selections, so you can go here to a selection, and I'm just going to go to the rectangular marquee tool, and you can just go down there. And then, of course, go to Filter, Render, and Picture Frame. And you can see the result. It just applies it just to that design there. Now, of course, you can always just remove that very quickly as well. Now, the thing is, I've just suddenly, while I was thinking about it, I'm trying it actually. I'm just going to see if it does. Elliptical marquee. Let's just see what it does do with that. Render. Sometimes it always selects the wrong layer background there that's what i want go to filter render and picture frame and you've got the design there now unfortunately it doesn't make it circular would be lovely if it followed the path of the of the thing no just puts it inside the selection which is fine but it would have been nice if it had sort of I mean, but clearly, obviously not. It, maybe there's other options to it. I don't know. This is one thing with these filters, that picture frame. Sometimes you apply it and you realize, and then you find other ways of looking at it and seeing how to use it. And that's what I'm saying with this. It really can be explored and looked at in multiple different ways to create some quite interesting, unusual designs. Just a pity, unfortunately, all those settings can't be edited a bit more. It's uh, very sort of stuck with a particular set of uh, different options, but. Anyway, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always adding new tutorials about obviously Photoshop, Photoshop 221. Uh, also, of course, Illustrator. And obviously, I'm not doing any Photoshops further back now, just doing the latest version. Illustrator, obviously, uh, After Effects, Affinity uh, Products, Publisher, Photo, Designer, etc., Rebel, Critter, and many, many others. Also, if you've got any comments, what things have I done wrong? What things have I done right? What things did you like? what things are maybe I just went a bit too fast on or something and you just didn't follow it, please let me know in the comments. Always happy to try and sort out some issues that, that you might have seen. Also a dislike or like, that's always appreciated. Thank you much.